This is Keith Boggs with Stonebriar Property Inspections and this is the debris for 6936 Post Oak Drive. Got about 65 items here. Some of these are videos, uh, most of these are pictures, uh, and most of these pictures are going to be just for us, for our purposes of talking. There are a few defects in here and things that you're going to want to address, but, um, you know, and some videos that we're going to show you. Uh, the most, most of this is really for your, just for your education. Um, and again, if you have a YouTube account, you'll be able to view it. So I'm gonna, the first picture here you see, once it opens up, there we go. Just a picture of the front of the house, nothing necessarily wrong. That's just for the title page of the report. Uh, very first thing I did is I went up on the roof, inspected the roof. The roof looks fine. Um, and I also took video because people, you know, you can tell them what's it. Yeah. I'm sorry? Careful look. Careful look at that. The roof. Oh, I don't care. Yeah, it's about a, about a little bit of a minute, a little bit of a minute long. Um, so I inspect it first, and I, then people are always asking, they still want to know what the roof you know, looks like. So I just started taking videos of the roof. So that way people can see what I see. Got ridge venting there, that's good. That's great with a vent. Usually, with, even with new roofs, there's usually a, a, a few a deep defects, but there was nothing there. It was, it was everything was fine. This is getting near the end here, we're close. Okay, this next uh, video here is also a little short video. This is a video of your water meter. This little dial right here, the little star thing, is called a low flow indicator. It's one of the, again, one of the very first things I do is I want to check for supply leaks. Supply leaks or anything under pressure, like your, your water, not drainage leaks, just supply leaks. And so if anything's running in the house, It'll spin around. If everything's off, it should be sitting completely still. If it's spinning with everything off, then you know that there's some type of supply leak going on. If there weren't any supply leaks, everything was fine. This video is about 30 seconds. We're going to play it so we capture it for this recording. I just basically stare at this for this little area right there for a couple minutes. Last 30 seconds, I just take a video to show that there was no movement of the low flow indicator. This is also a way you can tell yourself if you have a, if you think you have a, a, a leak before you go call on a plumber, you can come out to the meter here. And sit there and stare at that for a couple minutes and, and kind of stop. You have to pay a guy to come out here. But that's the first thing the plumber's going to do is go look at that. Well, it should be the first thing you should do. It's almost over. There we go. Uh, this is just the location. Actually, both meters for both houses. Uh, this meter for this house is on this side, and this one for your house is on that side. Okay, so there's some vegetation touching the structure. There's also some high soil. Um, you also have a, it looks like a bait station was here. I'm not sure if that was a preventative or if there was a past termite treatment. Um, but if you're doing a VA loan or FHA loan, any vegetation or any high soil is considered a conducive condition for wood destroying insects. So they're going to want you to remediate that. In other words, cut it, trim away the heavy vegetation, nothing touching the structure. And they want to probably gonna want you to lower the soil below what's called the brick ledge, which is where the bricks sit on top of the foundation. You do on some small banks will make you do this too, but if you're doing a conventional loan uh, or you're paying cash, then this won't matter. Uh, that's a base station right there. Basically, they put a piece of wood in there, stick it in the ground, come back every two or three months and look to see if the termites are eating it. And if there is, they put a chemical in there. It's not the best way to treat, but it's one of the ways they treat. Okay. Uh, I didn't see any treatment stickers, but uh, that's just the location of those things we we're just talking about. This vegetation, as long as it's cut away from the structure, uh, and far enough out under what's called the drip edge of the roof cover here, that's then that won't be considered conducive. But if it is, they're going to want that remediated too. Uh, this is on the front of the house here. You got a little bit of wood rot going on here, and that's because the wood is in contact with the roof cover here. So the wood acts like a like a wick, like a candle wick. And if it's in contact, uh, it'll start, slowly start wicking some some uh, moisture up into there. So there's there's flashing back there. I don't know how big the flashing is, because we can't see it. 
I saw some flashing underneath here though. Um, so I know there's some flashing under there. So you could normally today they have it where it sits about a, a half an inch or quarter inch off of the roof cover and then you see the flashing. And that's just where it's located right there. Uh, this is your condenser. Manufacturer's label. These two things are actually for me. This is when I go to the panel box to verify uh, the max breakers on the on the condensers. Uh, this is a little short video of the condenser doing its job. But is that on there when the condenser was done? Uh, when it was in, uh, manufactured? Or yeah. when it was installed? Not when it was installed. Uh, some, some people will go right on there. It's, it's hidden inside the serial number. Okay. Um, so I can't tell the age of it. You can. Um, I, I'll have to look it up. It's hidden inside the serial number. And they're all they're all a little bit different. Some of them actually put the date. Oh, here we go. This one has actually this one actually does have a date on it. Uh, 2009. Okay. So that's what nine years ago. November okay. November uh, November of 2009. That's when it was manufactured. It could have been installed. 2010, 2011, could have sat in the shelf there for who knows how long. Gen generally, they don't. They build them and then they sell them. Uh, this is another little bait station. You have several of those around the house. You got one over here, one over here. Um, so I'm not sure. Do you know? Was there any kind of treatments to the house? Do you know? Uh, she told me she has a full treatment to the house, and she's and they come out on a regular basis and uh, retreat. For insects, if she's got it, or they do quarterly, and then they also fill those bait stations up the chemical on a regular basis. Okay. Okay. Um, this is at the back of the house. This is what's considered high soil. Any, oh, any, okay. this, the, here you can see the foundation a little bit. So because it's gone for a little while. It's it's above it. Yeah. This is where yeah. this is when they when they well, termites can come up through the center of the house through plumbing and stuff. But uh, on the exterior, they make what are things what things that are called shelter tubes. And if you can see the foundation. You can actually see that shelter tube that they're building to access the structure. If the soil is above that brick ledge, then you can't see if there's any shelter tube. So we don't know if the termites are accessing the structure until you see them on the inside. Okay. Uh, there is a tree in the back, fairly close to the structure. I'm not super concerned about it. It's, it's, it's you know, it's it's in an area. There's really no plumbing back there. This is the master, I believe, right? Uh, no, that's mm -hmm. the guest bedroom. Guest bedroom. Okay. So, yeah. So the plumbing is down this way, I believe. Right, so this bathroom. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I'm not super it's concerned about it. The middle, yeah. Yeah. It's in the middle, right? I'm not super concerned about it. Now trees can, you know, they can affect the foundation. They can affect the plumbing. This tree is not right now is not affecting the foundation at all. There's no structural movement that I've, that I've seen. Um, so I'm not concerned structurally. And I'm really not super concerned uh, with the plumbing. Now, if you if you've had if there has been experiences where people have that this, those tree roots grow into the plumbing. If that's something you're concerned about, you can have a plumber come out here and scope the, scope the plumbing with the camera. Uh, however, that's pretty expensive. It can be five, six, seven hundred dollars to have them do that. Uh, this is the water pressure to the house. Uh, the range is 40 to 80. You're a little bit, of a, little bit below 60. For a si house of this size, that should be fine. Uh, this is your electric panel box. And the whole box is rusting. So this will be in the report. This, this buff, if the rusting box eventually will rust completely through. Um, and you'll want new water getting into there, or so they could touch it, get shocked. So uh, that will be in the report. This is inside the panel so box. So that's something that probably needs to be replaced. Yeah, yeah. There's and several other things we're going to talk about. Um, here, this, these are what, what are called neutral wires. Uh, let me give you an example. See how this? You got one wire going to that one location. Mm -hmm. One wire going to that one location. Here, you got two and three wires going to the same location. It's called double tapping. Uh, that's that's a fire hazard and can damage equipment connected to the circuits. So that's going to they're going to probably have to add another bus bar. Those wires should be spread apart. So in other words, neutral wire terminal, neutral wire terminal, neutral wire separation of the wires. Okay. Uh, this is inside the panel box. Uh, this is called a split bus bar. They're using uh, they're taking these wires to energy. This is a 220 circuit. Um, so they're using these wires to get the electricity they need to run that 220 circuit. The problem is if somebody was to come here without taking the cover off and knowing what this is and turn this breaker off, it's actually not off. It's still live. It's still a live circuit. Uh, they don't, that's not allowed to do that's not, they're not allowed to do that today. So let's say you, you, your nephew was over here and he decides to go work on this circuit. He doesn't, doesn't realize it's a belt. It's a, it's a uh, split bus bar and he turns it off and then he goes to work on something and he gets shocked. How do you correct this? Uh, you'd have to probably re in this case, replace the, the uh, panel box. The whole panel box? The whole panel box, yeah. 
uh, you can't see this. This is a corner compression uh, uh, crack over here. It may pop off, and there's some cracking of this extension of the uh, foundation. This is just cosmetic, not structurally significant. Uh, this is some old grounding. Uh, I'm guessing it was for telephone or something, maybe satellite. Uh, these are the AC differentials. So this is on the supply side. Uh, so I I'm, I'm, uh, have to re report the, uh, the temperature differential. It has to, should be between 15 and 20 degrees. Um, so this is on the supply side. And don't pay so much attention to the 54. We're looking at the difference between these two numbers. So 54 and a 67. So that's a 13 degree differential. So the AC is performing below the, the low end of the differential, which would be which would be 15. Meaning that it it's cooling, but not cooling, not cooling like it should. Okay. And this is the that's just the unit manufacturer's label. Again, this is just for me. Uh, this is your water heater. It's a Bradford White. Uh, it looks like it's fairly new, so I have to look it up the actual date though. Uh, this is in the uh, in the garage. You've got two outlets here. This is an open, what's called an open ground. So if it was if it was wired properly, these both this this light would be lit. And that would be like would be lit, would be correctly wired. So the ground is either not present or it's come loose on this outlet right there. So that's a shock hazard. So that needs to be repaired. So if somebody plug something into there, you could get they could get shocked. Is this that temporary wall that they put up? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I'm guessing probably maybe one of her ex-husbands wired this or something. Whoever did this room. Do you think? A generally electrician wouldn't make that mistake. Uh, this is these are some more differentials. 50 and 61, that's 11 degrees. Again, that's below the, the range. Uh, this is the toilet and the master, and it, you can jiggle it on the ground. It's loose. It just needs to be tightened down to the uh, to the floor. Uh, also, the plumbing at the master shower is loose inside the wall. Uh, as long as you don't hang anything heavy from there, it should be fine. Um, I wouldn't be putting the shower caddy there with your diffuser and your conditioner and your shampoo. Don't be hanging a bunch of stuff in there because it's not mounted in there. It could eventually, the weight, gravity could actually pull on the on the on the tiles eventually cause the tiles to break break loose or come loose. probably will want to put I don't think yeah. I saw a shelf or anything. I don't know I don't remember. Okay. But you can put the shelves in the corners and stuff. There's shelves you can put in there. There's okay. a shelf on the wall, I think. Is there it is. Sure? You can go and on. then you got a seat in there too. Oh okay. Yeah. You can put on the Oh okay, stuff great, seat. great. That's where we put our stuff on the seat. Uh, this is a loose outlet in the master. Spin that around. That just needs to be tightened up. Spin that around. There we go. So that outlet right there just needs to take off the cover, tighten down the two screws, put the cover back on. Pretty simple. Uh, this is the uh, guest bathroom. This door does not lock. So they have to replace that, that knob or get it fixed. Uh, these are some more differentials. We got a 48 and a 60. So that's 12, 11, 12 degrees. So we're still, you know, all three of those ratings are below. The different the, the low end of the range so probably just a service issue but we'll need to get an HVAC guy out here to take a look okay uh, this is your oven and this is again this is just for us to talk about the oven was set to 350 uh, the first time we took a reading on it it hadn't heated up yet so it took a little long to get going it did it I have another picture it did eventually get to the 350 so just keep in mind if you're going to cook something in there that's temperature sensitive just give it an extra five minutes you know to get to get up to temperature five or ten minutes just just to be safe you don't want to be ruining ruining food, you know. It's an old. That's an old, uh, old oven. This is your microwave. This is showing that it does heat. This is your cooktop. This is need taking readings at all the uh, elements, and they all heated fine. It's 650 degrees, 740 degrees. That, that's 760. It eventually gets over a thousand. Uh, this is my sticker to show that I did a termite report. So. Um, I, since I did not find any termites, I'm going to include a one-year warranty, and that's one year from when you close. So if you close in the middle of the next month, 12, 12, 12 months from that period, if any termites show up, you call this phone number here in Dallas, and they'll come out and treat it for free. Okay. Uh, this is just a reminder to tell you, I did test the disposal. I filled up the sink and drained them to look for leaks, and there were no leaks under the kitchen sink. Uh, this is the dishwasher. Dishwasher did heat. Uh, the trash compactor does not work. I'm assuming it's just being used as a trash. It's not plugged in even. Oh, okay. it, it works, she said, but uh, she never used it. She didn't. Never want to use it. It was too heavy for her to pick up out of there, she said. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, these are, uh, there's two locks at a center window here that uh, broke off. They're broken loose. 
since those locks don't need to be replaced. That's a 20, 50 cent fix, a dollar fix. Uh, that's the window right there. Uh, fireplace is not gas. It's just regular, regular uh, wood burning fireplace. Uh, oops. Uh, I did look up into the throat of the fireplace. It looks like there's a little bit of crease seat built up in there. So I'm going to put in the report. I'd recommend a, a, a chimney, chimney clean. Sweep, chimney clean. Yep, chimney sweep. Yep. Uh, this is this door right behind us here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a uh, what's called a, a double cylinder deadbolt. It's a key deadbolt. Um, so that should be a single cylinder deadbolt because uh, it's key. It's a fire hazard and a safety hazard. Because it should lock on yeah, the inside. Yeah, should be. Um, that key could, that key off. that key could be removed. Somebody removes the key. You don't realize that there's a fire. That's your only way out. You can't get out. Okay. Hopefully you would think throw a, throw, a, throw a chair through there, but. Uh, or somebody's trying to break in the front door, and you want to go out the back door, but you can't because the key's not there. Just a dip, that's uh, that's the that door it's at. This is up in the attic. At, the attic is a little low in insulation, um, so I'm gonna recommend uh, some additional insulation. But everything else looks fine up in the attic. Uh, this is the oven finally getting to it did finally get to 350. Uh, this is the heating, and the heating like the air was not performing like it should. Um, 95 degrees sounds sounds okay to you, but normally I had it set on a high temperature. It would be uh, it would be going probably 115, 120. I, I'm not seeing as high as 150, 160. Um, so the heating in the air is probably the biggest thing. It's not they're not both performing. Again, hopefully it's just a service issue, but we need to get an HVAC guy here to get in there, and look at the coils, look at the heat exchangers, and make sure there's not some kind of other underlying problem because uh, those things can be kind of expensive. Uh, this is another heat reading, 90, not good. That's a bad reading. And that's it. Okay. Any questions? No. <laughs> Pretty straightforward stuff, nothing major. So just uh, uh, HVAC, HVAC and that, that panel, panel, panel yeah. box. Yeah.